Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be on a table runner, or placemat, or just a table, little cover, whatever have you. That's going to depend on the amount of repeats that you do, and how long you make it. So how many repeats of your repeating rows. Now this is just a two row repeat until you do the edging. So without the edging here, that's what it looks like. And it is just a two row repeat with a single crochet border down each side. Now you add the edging to it like such, and that's what it looks like. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started now. If you are going to be using this in any situation that very, very hot from the stove items might get set on it, you're going to want to make sure that you have a high percentage of cotton. So greater than 50% would be perfect. Anything less than 50%, you risk melting whatever it is. So Preferably at least an 80% to 100% cotton, but if you went with a little bit a little bit less, like 70%, it would be fine. For this particular sample here that I have made, it is a 50-50 cotton and acrylic. And I just used a Baby B Hushabye Solid. It is baby blue. It is a discontinued yarn from a couple years ago. So, and it come in 206 yards. And I haven't even used the whole skein for this. That's going to be up to you to determine. Now this was, let's see what weight it was. It is a worsted weight. So any worsted weight is fine. I did use a five millimeter crochet hook to work it up. You'll need a darning needle to sew in your ends, a stitch marker and a pair of scissors. Again, it's entirely up to you if you want to do it in solid, in, in a multicolor, in the middle, and solid on the outside. Completely and entirely up to you. But we're going to get started here. I just have a random ball of yarn here. And we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Now we're going to work up in multiples of four plus three. So if you want to go ahead and get started chaining in multiples of four plus three for this particular one, which is, um, let me measure it in width for you. With the single crochet edging, I'm at eight and a half inches wide. So this is eight and a half inches wide. I did a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight repeats. So you would go one, two, three, four. That's one repeat. One, two, three, four. That's two repeats. And you will continue on until you have eight repeats of four plus three. I'm going to meet back up with you when we get to the end of our chain, and I'll tell you what to do next. All right. Once you have the width that you're looking for in multiples of four, you chain an extra three. What that is, is one edge stitch on each side of your multiples of four, plus our turning chain for our base chain. So we're gonna begin with skip your first stitch and go into the second stitch. Now, if you want to turn your work over and work into these back bumps, it is a lot better for the end result because we are going to be working into these stitches again. So, I'm going to turn my work over, and here's the first bump, and here's the second bump. That's the one that I'm going to go into, and I'm going to create a single crochet. Now, 
Now here's where you put your stitch marker to make sure when you come back to it, you don't lose track of that very first stitch. Now you're gonna work all the way to the other end, placing one single crochet in every stitch along your chain. Once you have reached the end, I'll meet back up with you and we will do the second row, which is the second row of our repeats. So single crochet for row one. And I'll meet back up with you for row two. All right, once you have made it to the end of your chain, placing one single crochet in every chain stitch, we're now either gonna do one of two things. You can chain up two or three, whatever you would normally chain up for your double crochet, your first double crochet, or you can do a mock double crochet. Now this is, if this is the first time you are seeing a mock double crochet, I'm gonna go nice and slow for you so that way you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pull up a loop about the height of a double crochet. I'm gonna place my finger on the crochet on top of that loop. I can slide the loop back and forth, but when I pull it this way or the other way, it's not slipping like around the hook. I'm keeping it from going around the hook. So I hold my finger on top of it and I bring my hook towards me down and under that loop and back up. Now I'm gonna bring it around and go into that stitch. Now I'm gonna start a double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Now when you pull through the last two, that loop that you were holding is actually the top of your double crochet. So if you would like to put a stitch marker into the top of that stitch right here, you are welcome to do so. That will indicate that that is the top of that first double crochet. All right, now next we're going to skip the next stitch and place one double crochet into each of the following three stitches. So there's one, two, and three. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna place a double crochet into that skipped stitch. So go ahead and yarn over and turn your hook, bring it down into that empty space, pick up the stitch you missed on the front side of your work, yarn over, pull a loop through, and I'm holding that first row in between my middle finger and my thumb to hold it steady. Now I'm gonna yarn over and complete that double crochet. Now we're gonna work, go back forward again. You're gonna find that last worked stitch, skip the next one, and place one double crochet into each of the next three. This is your repeat here. So one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And again, we're gonna go back and catch that missed stitch, that skipped stitch, by yarning over, bringing our hook back around to that stitch, going into it from the back to the front, yarning over, pulling up a loop, and then completing your double crochet. All right, one more time, a little bit faster. This is how we're gonna work to the very last stitch. So here's my last worked stitch right here. I'm gonna skip this next one and place one double crochet into each of the next three. There's one, here's two, and here is three. Now we're gonna go back and catch that skipped stitch There we are. 
So at this point, I have completed three of the eight repeats. I'm gonna go ahead and continue the next five repeats and place one double crochet into the very last stitch and that will mimic the start of this row. Then I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so I'm coming up to my last stitch down here, which is just a double crochet into that very last stitch. And we're gonna chain one and turn our work. Now you're just gonna repeat rows one and two, which is single crochet in every stitch all the way across for row one. Row two is where we're doing what we just did and crisscrossing that one stitch. Now when you turn over your work, and this is why I wanted to show you row one one more time, that crisscross will cause that one stitch to pull a little bit towards the front. So when you're single crocheting, you wanna make sure that you don't miss that stitch. And just single crochet all the way to the other end. And you can see how it kind of hides back here. All right, so that is how your repeat is going to look. A single crochet row and this crisscross row where you're crossing over the top of three double crochets with that fourth one. So what you're going to do at this point is you're gonna repeat those rows over and over again until you have the length that you desire. Now, if you want this to hang over the edge of your table or lay flat, that is up to you. You're gonna want to allow approximately four inches for each border. So from this point here to this point here is approximately four inches. Now that's going to depend, all of that's gonna depend on your crochet style, how loose of a crochet it is, how tight of a crochet it is. That's why I went with a five millimeter crochet hook because generally I would use a 5.5. I wanted it to be a little bit more tight together. So this is what you're working on now. You're working on the length, the overall length of the pattern. So if you want it to be the length of your table, that's how long you would go for that part. And then that four inches would hang over on each end. If you're working and you want it to lay flat on your table like this, then you would keep that in mind. You would go approximately eight inches shy of the edge of your table, and that would allow for four inches on each side of your runner. Now, if you're just doing this for a placemat, that's perfectly okay as well. I mean, there's so many options here. I, I could sit here and tell you all kinds of different ways to do it. For the placemat, you're gonna continue working the repeat of rows one and two for the length you desire. Then I'll come back and show you what to do next. We're just gonna place a single crochet all the way around your entire border here. Then we're going to work up the edging. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this just for a couple more repeats to give me a little bit of length. That way I can show you how to continue on with the edging. All right, so once you have it to the length that you want, you're gonna do one more repeat of row one. Now, if you remember, row one is just single crochet. So you're gonna chain one, turn your work over, and single crochet back into that stitch and place one single crochet in every stitch across. All right, once you have completed that last repeat of row one, 
Now is when you're going to either change colors or continue on in the same color. You also have another option. So you can single crochet one more row across, go down the side, evenly spacing out single crochets along the side, all the way across the bottom, and back up to the starting point here. Then change colors if you would like for the trim work, or you can wait and do like I did in the original piece here, where I just worked my edging and then I placed a single crochet edge all the way down that side and then cut away and went to the other side and worked a single crochet edge all the way down. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. That's up to you. It's a little more difficult when you change colors because then you would have to work a single crochet along the side in the main color and then you're gonna have to switch over for the edging to change the color so that way it all blends well. But if you're doing it in a solid, again, you can go all the way around the body of it and then create your edging or you can just work single crochet edging down each side once you've finished your edging. All right. So let's move on into the edging. I'm just going to go, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go straight from this swatch here, and we're going to begin working this edging. Now, it's three rows that are exactly the same, except the first row is a setup row, so we have to place where we're putting things into single crochets versus into the same stitches as the following two rows. So let's go ahead with row one, which is our setup row. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is a mock double crochet, or you can do your chain two or chain three. Let me get in a little bit closer so you can see better. So I'm gonna do my mock double crochet, just like that place my stitch marker here, the top, and then I'm gonna place two more double crochets into that same stitch, that very, very first stitch. All right. Next, we're gonna skip three stitches, one, two, and three, and we're gonna place a V stitch into the fourth. So, Go into that fourth stitch, you're gonna place a double crochet, a chain one and two, and double crochet back into that same stitch. Now we're gonna skip three, one, two, three, and place five double crochets into the following stitch. So just five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're just gonna repeat this down to the end and make the end match our beginning. So we're gonna skip three, one, two, three, and into the fourth, place a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, two, and double crochet. And then skip one, two, three, and into the following, you're gonna place the five double crochets. Go ahead and continue that repeat to the end. The very last stitch, you're gonna place three double crochets so it matches the beginning of the row. Just a real quick note here that I forgot to mention. When we get to the end, you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five stitches left. So instead of putting your th three double crochets into the fourth one, you're gonna put it into the fifth one. So we're just skipping an extra stitch here. So skip one, two, three, four, and into the fifth one, your last stitch, you're gonna place a total of three double crochets. Now, 
Now we're gonna turn our work over and you're gonna either chain two or three or you're going to work a mock double crochet along with me into that first stitch. And we are also gonna place two more double crochets into that same stitch, just like the row below. So the first stitch is three double crochets. Then we're gonna hop over to the chain two space of the V stitch and place a V stitch into that chain two space. Now we're gonna hop over to the third double crochet of those five, the center one. And you're gonna place five double crochets into that stitch. So into the center double crochet of that group of five, place five double crochets. And that's your repeat to the end where we place three double crochets in the last stitch. It's four. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we're gonna hop over to the chain two space of the V stitch and place a V into a V. And you're just gonna continue to repeat this to the end and I'll meet up with you. All right, I'm down here at the end where I'm gonna place three double crochets into that very last stitch. Now you'll notice it's starting to fan out. We'll fix that on the very last row. All right, so you're gonna repeat the row you just did one more time. So go ahead and turn your work over, place three double crochets into the first stitch, V into a V, five double crochets into the center double crochet of that group of five, and you're gonna repeat that to the very last stitch where you're gonna place three double crochets into that last stitch. I'm gonna meet up with you at that point and we will work on the last couple of rows together. All right, as you see, it's very, very flared out. We're gonna fix that now. So we have finished the last repeat of those shells and the V stitches with that three double crochets there. You're not gonna chain, you're just gonna turn your work over. And now we're gonna go straight over to this chain two space of the first V stitch. And we're gonna place three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. It's two, three, all into this chain two space. Chain one, two, three, and three more double crochets into that chain two space. One, two, and three. That is what draws it all back in by not chaining, not doing anything here. We're jumping straight to that chain two space. Now we're going to slip stitch to that third double crochet of the shell of five double crochets. So one, two, three, and just slip stitch. Now we're gonna jump over and repeat what we just did. We're gonna jump over to this chain two space and place three double crochets, chain three, and three more double crochets all into that chain two space. One, two, three, and three more double crochets. And you might have to shift your stitches a little bit in that chain two space to fit them all in there. It's 
two and three and then again you're going to jump over to your next group of five double crochets and slip stitch to that third one the center one now you're going to repeat that two more times and we're just going to slip stitch to the very last stitch now i'll meet up with you when we get down to that point all right, I'm down to the last stitch here. I'm going to jump over to the top of that last stitch and slip stitch to it. Now, as you see, it has brought that flared out edge back in. Now we're going to chain one, turn your work over. and single crochet back into that same stitch, that slipped stitch. It's a little hard to see, but you can do it. Single crochet. Place one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we're going to create a series of picots. One small, one medium, one small. So we're going to single crochet into this chain three space. Chain one, two, three. Come back down to the side of the stitch and insert your hook through the two loops on the side of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through and through to slip stitch that chain back down to the bottom. That is your first small pico. Now we're gonna single crochet back into that chain three space and we're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And again, we're going to come down and we're going to slip our hook underneath those two side loops, yarn over and pull through and through and tighten that down. That is a large pico. Now we're going to make one more small pico. One, two, three, lock it down to the side of that stitch. And there you have your three picots in that chain three space. Everything else we do is single crochet. So we're going to place one single crochet in each of the next six stitches, skipping over that slipped stitch in between the two groups of three. So there's the first three. Here's the slip stitch. We're going to jump over it and go straight into the next stitch and place one single crochet in each of those three. So each side of your chain three has three double crochets, remember, and then a slip stitch and then three double crochets and chain three, three double crochets. So single crochet into those double crochets. Into the chain space, you create a small pico, a large pico, and another small pico. We'll do that one more time. So single crochet into the chain three space and chain one, two, three. Slip stitch to the side of that single crochet. And then single crochet into that chain three space and make a large pico. One, two, three, four, five chains and slip to the side of that single crochet. There we go. Slip stitch. Single crochet into the chain three space and chain one, two, three. Slip stitch to the side of that single crochet. And you have created your next three picots. Now we're gonna continue on with six more single crochets, create the picots, six more single crochets, create the picots, and then you're gonna single crochet down the three 
and catch that very edge stitch, which was a slip stitch. And you will be done with this placemat or table runner, whatever you chose to make. I would love to see your make if you would like to share it with us on the Facebook group. That would be awesome. We would love to see it, and I can share it in the Sunday podcast slideshow. And if you don't have Facebook, you can email it to me privately. And I would love to see it. I can also show it from there. If you decide to make it a little bit different, I'd be interested in seeing that as well. So let's go ahead and bring over the original. So there you have it. That is how you complete it. Again, the options are endless with how you want to do it. You could make these even longer and then create the Pico row, the last two rows. It's all up to you. But either which way, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. I would love to see your work. If you do make it, be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now.